Hello, everybody, and welcome to the online digital service for St. Paul's United Methodist Church. We are certainly glad that you have taken time out of your busy schedule to join us. There's a couple of things that uh, we'll go over before we start our worship service. Number one, if this is something that, that you enjoy, something that moves you and you wish to, to make a donation, if you want to contribute, if you want to send an offering... Uh, our address is P.O. Box 921, Lufkin, Texas, 75902. Uh, this service takes a little bit more money to do. And so uh, if, you, if you feel led, uh, send some money so we can do things that would make it even better. Also, if there's a time that you want to join us uh, for in-person worship, our address is 1505 South John Reddit Drive here in Lufkin, Texas. That's on the South Loop uh, at Loop 287 and Hank Street. We worship at 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings and we would love it if you would come and, and stop by. Uh, at this time, uh, let us get our hearts ready for worship. So let, let's prepare ourselves uh, for worship as we bring in the Holy Spirit. Dear Holy Spirit, come into this, this space so that this worship service can be truly wonderful for all. We ask these things in your Son, Jesus' name. Go fight, win. Amen.
Let's join in our profession of faith this morning. Our profession of faith will be the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended to heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's go to our Lord in silent prayer and reflection. Dear Lord, thank you for all the blessings that you continue to give us. Thank you for all the opportunities that we have to be your hands and feet here on earth. Uh, and we ask that you can di continue to give us strength, wisdom, and courage so that we can do just that. Lord, we ask that you bless this congregation. Bless the congregation uh, that, that worships on Sundays. Bless the congregation uh, that, that, that can't be there for some reason or another, either from illness or, or distance. And, and bless the congregation that hasn't even joined us yet because we know that you are moving in amazing and, and miraculous ways. Lord, we lift up our country. We lift up all the things that, that are going on. And sometimes uh, it, it seems like, like we will never be able to work through things and never be able to become uh, one cohesive country. But we know that you are with us and that we, we know that you are the God of peace. And so continue uh, to put peace in our hearts as we go forward. Lord, we lift up the medical professionals that are, that are fighting the, the various diseases, especially COVID as it, as it continues to, to ramp up and with the Delta variant, we ask that, that you be with each and every one as they do the things that are necessary to keep us safe. We know that they have been going through this for a very long time. And we know that, that sometimes it just uh, weakens you out as you, as you face the same thing over and over. But we know that you are the God of strength and we know that, that you are with them. And we know that you want us to be happy and safe. And so therefore, we ask that you continue to be with those medical professionals, the doctors, the nurses, the technicians, all the people that, that are, do the things that, that keep us safe and sound. Lord, we ask that, that you continue to bless our nation, bless the world, because we are all your children. Bless those that are recovering from, from disasters and bless those that are in war torn, torn areas. Uh, because even in the bleakest, most chaotic place, we know that you are there. Lord, we lift up all these blessings that, have, that, that people are, are lifting up, whether it be in the sanctuaries or our online services. And, and we know that through intercessory prayer that you do amazing and incredible things. And we lift up that, that one prayer, that prayer that Jesus taught us to pray as he said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I 
once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It paid my heart in love and wrote my name above, and just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. Now when you feel a little prayer will turn him. And you know a little fire is burning. You will have a little talk with Jesus. Makes it right. And makes it right. Sometimes my path seems drear without a ray of cheer And then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day The mists of sin may rise and hide the starry skies And just a little talk with Jesus clears the way Now let us have a little talk with Jesus Let us tell him all about our troubles He will hear our faintest cry He will answer by and by Jesus makes it right and makes it right. I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with, with tears, but Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care, and just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. And he will answer by and by. And when you feel a little prayer will turn him. And you know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Hey, Tater. What? I just said, hey, Tater, like I always do. That's OK. I wasn't listening. Like you always do. <laughs> Wait, what's that supposed to mean? That means that sometimes you don't listen. In fact, most of the time you don't listen. Listen to what? <laughs> to anything. Sometimes I think you're just in your own little. Yes, I am awesome. <laughs> What did you think I was saying? You said that I'm my own man, a trend center, a natural leader. <laughs> Not even close. Tater, your problem, no. Your main problem, no, that's not right either. One of your many problems <laughs> is that you don't know how to listen. I'm listening now. Then what did I just say? When? Just now. What did I just say? No, before that. I really don't know. Because you weren't listening. <laughs> no, I was listening. I just wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Duh! Even the Bible says we should be quick to listen, so slow to speak. I can speak pretty slow. You want to hear how I do it? You aren't listening! Yes, I am. You want me to speak slower? I don't want you to speak at all. I want you to listen. All you had to do was ask. <laughs> the Bible says we should be quick to listen, slow to speak. Don't even think about it. Gulp and slow to anger. Physician, heal thyself. <laughs> Never mind. If we spend more time listening than talking, maybe we will understand where others are coming from. Maybe we can sense their needs and frustrations. Maybe we can even be better neighbors. Maybe we wouldn't be so mad at the little things.
<sighs> Maybe we need to pray. Everyone, bow your hands and repeat after me. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, help us take time to listen. Help us take time to listen. Listen to our friends and family. Listen to our friends and family. Listen to our neighbors. Listen to our neighbors. Listen to the world. Listen to the world. And most of all, listen to you. And most of all, listen to you. Amen. Amen. Chip, I hate to admit it, but you are correct. Well, thank you, Tater. I know that takes a lot for you to admit. You are right. I do need to speak slower. <sighs> Say goodbye, Tater. Goodbye, Tater. Wait! What else do I need to say? I wasn't really listening! Our scripture this morning comes from the book of James, the first chapter, verses 17 through 27. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be kind of first fruits for all he created. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the world plant, word planted in you, which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves, and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless as this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, open up our hearts, open up our minds, and help us learn. We ask these things in your son Jesus' name. Go fight, win. Amen. You know, today we start a series from the New Testament book of James. First of all, a little background. You know, James is the first of what they refer to as the universal or Catholic letters. No, they weren't written to the Roman Catholic Church. They're written to any and all churches that are in the way. Uh, they follow Paul's letters in the Bible and that were all written to specific churches or towns, you know. And so this is a universal letter. Authorship, according to uh, verse 1, is by James. It's, it's self-offered. But James who? You know, we attribute this letter to James, the half-brother of Jesus. But there are many Jameses in the New Testament. You have James, son of Zebedee, James, son of Alphaeus, James, brother of Jesus, James the Younger, James the father of Jude. But only James, the son of Zebedee, and James, the brother of Jesus, would have had enough well-known, enough stroke to be a self-afforded author of a book. And James, the son of Zebedee, died uh, in like 40 A.D., so most likely it is the brother of Jesus that wrote this. You know, Josephus, the, the, the famous historian, writes about James, the brother of Jesus, and, and gives us a lot of things about his ministry, and it also tells us how he died. James was thrown off the pinnacle of the temple when he refused to deny Jesus and deny that he was resurrected. And when that didn't kill him, he began to pray for his enemies. And then, they, then his enemies stoned him and clubbed him to death. Wow, pretty exotic. You know, and everyone doesn't like the book of James. Most famously, you have Martin Luther, who calls it the epistle a straw, meaning it was designed to line the animal stall. Ah. So you got to love Luther. You know, he and actually many present evangelicals believed it directly contradicts Paul's writing. 
But most scholars, Brother Steve included, believe that the two do not contradict, but rather are, were addressing different points. Paul believes that we are justified, saved through faith in Jesus alone. James says that if we have faith in Jesus, then we should show the faith in the way that we live. Okay, it's all a matter of perspective. But in today's reading, James points out that words matter. Be quick to listen. Be slow to speak and therefore slow to anger. These are excellent words in, in, in any time in today and the time that, that James was writing it because wherever outrage is the fashion, sound familiar? This is a time that be slow to anger. You know, James believes that anger distracts us from the word, from Jesus' teachings that, that God had implanted in us. Let's look at that for a second. Whenever we're talking, whenever we're angry, whenever we're in rage, are we showing God's love? Are we showing grace? Now, James thinks and believes that God implanted that same love and that same grace in each and every one of us. But whenever, we are, whenever we're slow to listen and fast to speak, we're not showing what is ingrained in us. So he says that we need to be doers of the word, of the things that Jesus taught. If we hear the word, the things that Jesus taught, but, uh, but do not uh, do the word, it's to forget what you look like. It's the mirror image, right? Uh, and, we, and we also forget that that mirror image is the image of God that is in us waiting to come forth in abundance of love, mercy, and grace. So what do we do? You know, it's actually pretty simple. Talk less, listen more. When we listen, we show respect. And actually, when we listen, we learn easier. You ever notice that? That whenever we're talking, we're usually not learning. But when we listen, we can learn. We can learn so much. You know, I was a professional salesperson. And when I'd go out and do sales calls, one of the things that I had to learn to do was listen more. Sometimes I just had to shut up and listen to what my customer or my client was saying because what he was saying was what he wanted me to address. Once I heard that, once I listened to what was really bothering him or what he was really wanting, then, then I could feel that need. And when we learned in that need, that made that sale so much easier. And so when, when you were around really professional salespeople, salespeople that were skilled in that, they were skilled in listening. You know, once I became a pastor, uh, I had some of the same skills that, that were needed. And, but it's especially important as we're doing visits, as a pastor's doing visits, pastoral visits, is to listen, to listen to what the person's telling you, uh, whether it be in the home or especially in the hospital. Because when you're doing hospital visits, uh, the person that you're visiting is usually telling you an awful lot. They're telling you about their family. They're telling you about uh, the way their faith is. They're telling you an awful lot of things that you need to know because they're also going to tell you what they're scared of. They're also going to tell you what you need to address when you pray over them and, and, and what other people need to know. Uh, it, it is really, really important that as a pastor that you just sometimes be quiet and let that person talk. In the end of time, you know, the, whenever somebody dies, that's when that becomes really, really important. Because when you're doing a funeral sermon, if you've listened to the person as they're telling you, you have so many things that you can tell the, the, the audience, that you can tell the congregation, that you can tell the family. And let's face it, a good funeral service is not for the person that has passed away. A good funeral person uh, service is for the family itself so that they can find closure. When you tell them the things that the person has told you, 
because you listen to them, you find that that goes much, much smoother. You know, every year in the United Methodist Church, we have annual conference. Annual conference is when we come together from all over the conference. And, and the Texas Annual Conference is a fairly large conference. It goes from, from the other side of Houston all the way to the Louisiana border, all the way up to Texarkana. It, it comes down. Uh, it doesn't go into Dallas, but it goes all the way down to the Brazos River and, and, and cuts down from there. It's, it's a very large conference. And when we come together, all these churches, a thousand churches come together. And, and for a couple of days, we're doing the business of the conference. It's important that you listen. It's important that you listen to what's going on. Because the small churches, large churches, medium churches, they all have challenges. You know, we often face the same challenges that somebody in the Bryan area has, or somebody from the Beaumont area has, or somebody from the Texarkana area has, or even Metropolitan Houston has. And when we listen, and we're not just trying to talk over them, we could see where God is working in those. So often, the problems that we have, the obstacles that we face, is because that there's poor communication. I'll tell you that, that it is very difficult sometimes for me to remember that, that my brothers and sisters in downtown Houston are proclaiming the same exact gospel that I am in down, well, I'm in, I'm in downtown, I'm in outskirts of Lufkin. But it's important that, that we as followers listen more and talk less. These are all opportunities to show our faith. You know, when we're talking to friends and we're talking at neighbors and, and even when we're at work, when we use our ears more than our mouths, we can get along much better. You, you've, you've heard the old thing that God gave you two ears and only one mouth, so therefore you should listen twice as much as you talk. Well, I think that that's, that's wrong. I think you should probably listen. I think it's exponential that you should probably listen four times as much as you talk. Because that way we can all get along together. And when we look at ourselves in the mirror, as James says, and we can see the image, and we're all made in God's image. When we listen to each other, we can see God in each and every one of us. And isn't that what we're supposed to be doing anyway? Go fight, win, amen. So go out into the world, show in the world God's love and God's grace, not just by the things that you say, but by the things that you do. Go fight, win. Amen. Would somebody please just listen to me? I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. Did you say something, princess? <laughs> 
That concludes our service for this week. We hope that it has touched you and that you have felt the spirit as you, as you watched it. Uh, if you wish to be a part of our in-person service, once again, we worship at 11 o'clock in the mornings on Sunday morning at 1505 South John Reddit Drive here in Lufkin, Texas. That's on the South Loop and uh, in the Copeland area. We would love for you to join us uh, if you can. And if you can't, we invite you to come back next week and, and join us again for our, um, on this online service. Uh, it has meant so much that you have spent time to come together. So go fight win. Amen.